the legal side of podcast monetization, this is what creators really, really need to know. So imagine that you uh, have finally landed your dream sponsorship deal for your podcast and you're making good money and your audience is growing and things could not be better until you get that email that stops you in your tracks, puts off screeching, breaks, sound, everything stops. It's from your sponsor's legal team and they're claiming that you've breached the terms of the contract and they're demanding that you pay back uh, a big chunk or maybe even all of the money that they've already paid you. Well, it turns out your contract had a clause in it that you didn't notice and now they are terminating because of some minor kind of slip up on your end um, and, and what are you going to do? It's a podcaster's worst nightmare, but it's avoidable if you understand the legal side of monetizing your show. So in this episode, we're going to break down how to go about monetizing your podcast the right way, legally and effectively. So let's get started. <laughs> well, hey there, welcome back to Legit Podcast Pro. I'm your host, Gordon Firemark, the podcast lawyer, and today we are tackling one of the most important topics for any serious podcaster, monetization. We're going to take a deep dive into the legal side of turning your show into a revenue-generating venture without landing yourself in any kind of legal trouble. Whether it's sponsorships and ads or merchandise or crowdfunding or other things, there are some critical legal considerations that you need to keep in mind. Now, if you're new here, this show is all about helping creators navigate the legal and business side of podcasting so they can focus on creating great content. And so if you stick around till the end, I've got a special video for you I want you to check out. It's called Level Up Your Podcast Success, Essential Frameworks for Professional Creators. And that'll be linked here in the show notes and uh, also on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. So step one is understanding the legal foundations for monetization. First off, before you start making money with your podcast, it's important to have a solid business foundation. If you are serious about monetizing your show, consider establishing a formal structure like an LLC. Well, why? Because it helps to limit your personal liability if things go south with a sponsor or partner. If somebody sues the business, your personal assets like your home and car won't be on the line. And having a separate business entity makes it a lot easier to handle your finances and taxes and, and also the relationships and management. It's also essential to have a separate business bank account and maintain clear financial records and make sure you're, you're keeping separate things separate. Commingling funds is one of the biggest mistakes that new business owners can make, and it can lead to issues if you ever get audited or have a dispute with a partner, or if you get sued, it could sometimes eliminate some of that liability protection. But perhaps the most crucial piece of, is having your agreements in writing. Handshake deals and casual email agreements – really don't cut it when there's real money involved. A proper contract should outline the payment terms, the duration of the agreement, and this is a big one, a clear termination clause and some other things. So you know what happens if either party decides they want to back out. Also, you should include specifics like what happens to any unused ad slots if a sponsor pulls out. It's better to plan for these scenarios up front rather than scramble to address them later. And, and now that I think of it, you also should figure out, well, how are you going to make good on an ad obligation when you have made a mistake and left something out or or uh, not not done the sponsorship quite the way the, uh, the paying sponsor was expecting? So let's now talk about the main ways to monetize a show and the legal considerations behind each of them. Now, these are not the only ways, but these are some of the big ones. It's not just about choosing which revenue stream you want to use, but also about understanding the legal requirements to execute them correctly. Sponsorships and ads are probably the first things that come to mind for most of us when you start thinking about how you're going to make money with a podcast. But, you know, these deals, first of all, they take you have to have a big audience and, um, you know, you need good contracts in that situation. So make sure you're clear on how many mentions or slots are included, what is going to, you know, what performance looks like, what constitutes a breach, and what are the terms for payment. And be as specific as possible. When are you going to get paid? Is it per episode or per month or for the whole campaign? And be really precise about the language that's used in the document because you don't want to have a misunderstanding that leads to the kinds of problems that we often see. So is there a clause about performance metrics or penalties if the download numbers decline and things like that? 
It's also important to keep in mind that as the podcaster, you're responsible for complying with Federal Trade Commission FTC disclosure <laughs> guidelines. Uh, whenever you're promoting a product or a service, you have to let your audience know if you're being paid for it. That means using clear language like this episode is sponsored by or or brought to you by. In every episode where that ad appears, you need to use that language because skipping that step or being vague or misleading about it can lead to fines and loss of credibility and real trouble with your sponsor as well. So a lot of podcasters also turn to affiliate marketing where you promote products and you get a cut of the sales. But here's the thing. The law also says this is another situation where you have to disclose the relationship to your listeners. Don't just sneak in a mention. It has to be a clear and conspicuous disclosure. Say something like, the links in the description are affiliate links, and that means I'll get a commission if you buy through them. That kind of transparency is really essential. Frankly, the audience has a right to know. And if you don't do it, you could face fines or other kinds of problems. <clears throat> now, another potential issue is overpromising on behalf of the company that you're promoting. If you make unsubstantiated claims about a product and then someone buys based on your recommendation, well, you could be held responsible along with the brand. Make sure you're familiar with what you're promoting and stick to honest, clear endorsements. Well, what about merch, merchandising? Well, creating and selling branded merchandise can be a great revenue stream, but you have to watch out for copyright and trademark issues, among other things. If you're using logos, catchphrases, or artwork that belong to someone else, you got to get a license. For example, you're creating t-shirts with a popular movie quote. Well, you could be infringing someone's rights. And if you're creating your own, be sure you consider seriously consider registering your own trademarks so you can protect your brand from copycats. Once you build that recognizable brand, others might try to copy your designs or your slogans, so registering them really gives you the legal standing you need to stop that. Finally, there is crowdfunding and donations through platforms like Patreon or Ko-Fi or Kickstarter even. These platforms make it pretty easy to build a community around your show, but remember, this income is taxable income, so make sure you're documenting everything and setting aside funds for tax season. <coughs> and if you're offering exclusive content or perks in exchange for donations, well, you're essentially running a business transaction. It's not just a gift. That means you need to be upfront about what your patrons are getting in return and make sure that you're delivering on those promises. There are also some copyright and intellectual property concerns with your monetized content. Some of the biggest legal risks come in this area, so you need to make sure you own or have the right to use everything that appears in your show. That includes the music, the sound effects, even the material your guests bring into the table, even their, just their performance. If you're hiring someone to create your intro music or design your logo, you need a written agreement stating that you own the work outright or you have a license to use it. You also should have a signed guest agreement that specifies who owns the rights to the interview content. Head on over to guest release, I'm sorry, podcastrelease.com and get my free guest release. It's a great example of what you need. Lots of creators don't really think about this, but if a guest decides later that they don't like how they were portrayed, they could, or they don't like you anymore, they could demand that you pull that episode unless you've got a signed release. And if you're using third-party media like a movie clip or a song snippet, be sure you get the proper permissions, or you could be at risk of a takedown notice or worse, a lawsuit. Now, good contracts are always your first line of defense against disputes. Every agreement should include the basics, payment terms, duration, termination rights, but it also needs to spell out who owns what. If you're selling ad space, define when and where those ads will appear. If it's a co-host agreement, outline who controls the rights to the show. If you don't define ownership up front, you could be looking at a messy legal battle if and when you're, you and your co-hosts ever part ways. So if you're interested and you need some templates and resources for uh, podcaster-specific forms, I've got a set of legal forms designed specifically for you. So you don't have to start from scratch. These templates cover everything from guest releases to sponsorship agreements, and you can get them all over at podcastlawforms.com. Now, let's dig a little deeper into some of the most common legal pitfalls that podcasters face when it comes to monetizing. Even small oversights can turn into major issues that cost you time, money, or even your reputation. Here are a few of those common pitfalls and how you can avoid them. 
Number one is failing to disclose those affiliate relationships or sponsorships. It's a biggie and probably the most common mistake new podcasters make. The FTC requires that clear, conspicuous disclosure of any financial relationship you have with brands whose products or services you promote. That means if you're getting paid to mention the brand, or if you're using affiliate links that earn you a commission, or if you've received goods for free that you either don't have to return or, or whatever, you, you have to tell your listeners about it. And not just once, but every time that relationship comes into play. Saying something like, this episode is brought to you by XYZ, well, that might not be enough. The disclosure needs to be clear and unambiguous. So you say, I'm an affiliate and I might earn a commission if you buy through these links. That's a much more effective way to say it. And failing to comply could result in fines both for you and the brand. So the big hit is really to, the, to your reputation. If your audience feels like you're not being transparent, you could lose their trust. And that is much harder to rebuild than it is to maintain just by making these simple disclosures. The next pitfall is using copyrighted material without permission. Just because something is available on the internet doesn't mean it's free for you to use it in your podcast. This is a big mistake that podcasters make when they start to use music or video clips or sound effects into their episodes. Copyright law protects the original creators of these works, and using these things without permission could lead to serious trouble. You might just get a takedown notice or a cease and desist letter, or it could be a lawsuit demanding money damages. And you don't even have to be making money from it for them to say you cost them an opportunity to make money or something like that. So be really careful. The safest way to avoid this pitfall is make sure that you're either creating your own content, original work, or using royalty-free royalty music and effects from legitimate sources. And even then, make sure you check the license terms to see what's allowed and whether you can use it for commercial purposes or if there are any restrictions. Watch out for something called a single-use license. And if you're looking to use copyrighted content, you have to reach out to the creator or the rights holder and negotiate an agreement, a license or permission agreement. It might cost you a little bit of money up front, hopefully only a little, but it's much cheaper than defending against a copyright infringement lawsuit. Now, when you're crowdfunding or generating ad revenue, ignoring tax obligations is another pitfall. As you start generating revenue from these methods, sponsorships, ads, donations, whatever, you have to keep track of every dollar. A lot of podcasters treat this income or Patreon or ad revenue as extra money, and they don't think about the tax implications. But the IRS doesn't see it that way. Whether it's a few bucks from a sponsor or thousands in Patreon pledges, all of it is taxable income. One of the biggest pitfalls is failing to report that or not setting aside enough to pay your taxes. That could lead to some unpleasant surprises at tax time. Penalties and interest tacked onto what you already owe can really add up. The best approach is to treat your podcast like a business from the very beginning. Keep good records of your earnings and expenses and consider talking to an accountant who understands digital creative businesses. That person will be able to help you structure your finances and set up for quarterly estimated tax payments if necessary so you never get caught off guard. Another major pitfall is relying on verbal or casual email kinds of agreements. I can't tell you how many times I've seen creators get in disputes because they didn't take the time to put their agreements down in writing. When things are going well, everybody's on the same page. But the minute the money starts rolling in or expectations shift or costs increase, misunderstandings can spiral pretty fastly uh, to getting out of control. So without a written agreement, it can be hard to prove what those original terms and agreements were. You don't want to find yourself in a he said, she said situation with your co-host or a sponsor or anybody really. Written contracts provide clarity and help prevent disputes. They lay out each party's rights and responsibilities. They specify who gets paid what and when, and they define what happens if someone wants to end the relationship. If it's not in writing, then it's open to interpretation and sometimes to faulty memory. That's where most legal problems really begin. And when you're just starting out, it's easy to just see the podcast as a hobby. But if you're earning money for it or even just planning to earn money for it, from it, the IRS and the legal system, they're not going to treat you as a hobbyist. If you don't set up the proper business entities like an LLC or a corporation, you could be putting your personal assets at risk. 
Say you're running your podcast as a sole proprietor, that's just you with no formal business structure, and you get sued because a sponsor feels you didn't live up to a promise you made. Without the protection of a formal business structure, they could go after your personal bank account, your retirement savings, your home, your car, anything you've got. Setting up a company like an LLC is a relatively simple process. It provides a layer of protection that separates your personal assets from the risks and liabilities inside the business. It also helps to lend credibility to your show and establishes you as a serious professional in the eyes of your sponsors and your partners. It can be a pretty small investment that can save you a world of trouble later on. Now, be sure to check your you know, local state rules and, and, and the cost of things because some places there are taxes and other payments that can drive the cost up and you have to do a bit of a cost-benefit analysis. But generally, forming an LLC is a good idea once you're getting into generating money. Um, now, this one's a little more subtle, but... Just as dangerous, if you overpromise results to your sponsor, like guaranteeing a certain number of downloads or conversions, and then you can't deliver on that, well, you could find yourself accused of a breach of contract. Even if you are confident about your show's performance, be conservative with estimates and always have a backup plan, a make good plan, in case things don't go as expected. Include specific clauses about performance in your contracts to outline what happens if the metrics don't get hit. Can the sponsor terminate the contract early? Do they get a refund? Or do they just get a, an extra mention, an extra sponsorship slot? Having these details in writing can save you, you and the sponsor from misunderstandings and legal battles that can lead to no good. So as you grow, it's really important for long-term monetization that you review your contracts and legal agreements regularly. What worked when you were just starting out might not be enough as you're managing multiple sponsors and, and multiple revenue streams. Make a habit of reviewing your agreements annually and keep an eye on changing regulations that might affect your business. For example, the FTC rules around disclosures have been evolving over the last few years, and new tax laws could certainly impact how you report your earnings. So establish a system for keeping good records, all your contracts, forms, and agreements organized, so they're easy to access and easy to update. And as your revenue streams expand, it's also really a good idea to build a team around you. Consider bringing in a lawyer or an accountant who understands the nuances of digital content creation and can provide some expert advice when it's needed. Legal compliance is an ongoing process, not a one-time task. So as we wrap things up, monetizing your podcast can be really exciting, but you need to get this legal side right from day one. Contracts, disclosures, protecting your IP, these are non-negotiables. And if you need help, come on over to podcastlawforms.com for my templates and resources made specifically for you podcasters. And don't forget to check out our featured video. I think it's going to be over here. Um, uh, it's called Level Up Your Podcast Success, Essential Frameworks for Professional Creators. And until next time, I'm Gordon Firemark, the podcast lawyer, signing off. See you soon.